Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. It's Wednesday, the last day of October, October 31st. Things are still very, very unstable in Israel. And I wanted to mention something that we get a lot of mail about, and that is the concept of Zion or Zionism. Uh, we've done a lot of research and writing on that subject over the years. And the word Zion, Z-I-O-N, occurs 153 times in the Bible. Uh, it is a reference to Mount Moriah, that is the Temple Mount. And in fact, when David with his army originally took the Temple Mount uh, in conquest, and when that Temple Mount was then dedicated to the Lord as a site for the Holy Temple, <clears throat> David named the place Zion. And Zion, as I understand it, the Hebrew word Zion, it's a word that means a marker or a marker for a special place. And so David named the mountain Zion. And from that time to this, that mountain has been essentially designated by that name in the Bible. And so when you read about Zionism, you're simply reading about uh, Israel's claim under the Davidic monarchy to that piece of ground known as Zion. Now, Zion is right in the middle of Jerusalem. And of course, we read in Zechariah chapter 12, the burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. That's the preface to what follows. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. Uh, Judah and Jerusalem are, are the focal point. Jerusalem, the other name for that in the Bible, is Zion, uh, so named by David himself. And so when you read about Zionism, essentially you're reading about Israel's struggle to reclaim its biblically ordained designation. Now, in Israel today, as indicated prophetically by Zechariah, where he said, Behold, I'll make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in uh, siege around Jerusalem. When you mention that fact, essentially you're talking about today's news because there is a reordering of the powers that surround Jerusalem Israel and that surround Jerusalem, and, and the siege is tightening up every day. Uh, from Deb Kephile, October 30th, Syria is on a cliff edge between Assad and Al-Qaeda. And by the way, Al-Qaeda is growing stronger by the day. Very, very strong and, and increasing in strength, and not only in strength, by the way, but in its uh, the unity of its operation. It, it, it is now under the leadership of some very competent people. Uh, here is this article from Debka File, The Collapse of the Aid al Ada Truce, uh, brokered by UN envoy Lakhdar Brahmini, left Syria careening into unknown territory. And so what was unstable is now twice as unstable. Uh, in Syria. The powers which castigate uh, Bashar Assad for butchering his people refuse to abandon their hands-off policy toward clipping his wings. On this point, there's little difference between the United States President Barack Obama and his Republican rival Mitt Romney, except that the latter says Syrian rebels ought to be given heavy arms for defense against Assad's army, tanks, and air force. Even America's allies in the region are being held back from direct military confrontation with the Assad regime. And so uh, you have here a back and forth struggle <coughs> between the leaders of Iraq, Turkey, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and Bashar al-Assad. And it's a struggle that has raged back and forth and back and forth, held in a, in a strange uh, sort of a static but faltering balance for some time now by international uh, conferencing that's going on concerning Syria. Here's an interesting news note <clears throat> uh, dated today, October 31st, from the Times of Israel. 
Netanyahu lands in Paris, meets with a French uh, president to talk about Iran. Well, you've got to throw Iran into the mix as well. Listen to this article. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu arrived in Paris Wednesday for a two-day state visit and met with French President Francoise Hollande. Uh, later in the day, he's scheduled to meet Prime Minister Jean-Marc Ayot and Foreign Minister Laurent Fabiou. Netanyahu met Hollande, by the way, the president of France, for the first time since the French president's inauguration in May. As reported by the France 24 news agency, uh, Hollande has already welcomed Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas to Paris on two occasions, has only spoken twice to Netanyahu by telephone. And so we can see here that the relationship between uh, the French government and the Israeli government is, uh, is picking up speed. <coughs> Netanyahu told French weekly newspaper Paris Match that he would discuss, Hollande, discuss with Hollande, quote, practical ways to intensify sanctions against Iran in order to compel Tehran to abandon its nuclear program. And by the way, that nu nuclear program uh, is accelerating. Uh, as documented by a number of people, there have been a number of foreign news reports uh, that have uh, documented the fact that Iran uh, is speeding up its uh, centrifugal uh, uh, uranium purification processes uh, by factors uh, of uh, 10 in order to speed up the production of nuclear warheads. Netanyahu says Tehran has accelerated its uranium enrichment in recent years for the purpose of acquiring nuclear weapons and reiterated his stance that Israel reserves the right to defend itself. And so uh, this was what the conversation was all about in France. Meanwhile, to Israel's north, the situation in Syria continues to decay. Uh, Hezbollah, which is, by the way, more or less in league with Al-Qaeda, reportedly has installed a surveillance network uh, along the Israeli border. And this, too, comes from the Times of Israel, dated October 31st. Hezbollah has installed a surveillance camera network along the entirety of the Lebanese border with Israel. That's Israel's northern border. Uh, this was reported just today, according to Al Mustahbal, uh, which is affiliated with the Lebanese oppos opposition's March 14th alliance. And so these are pretty reliable sources coming out of the Middle East. The cameras are located at a distance ranging from a few meters to 200 meters uh, from the Blue Line, the international border between Israel and Lebanon. Security sources told the Daily that the cameras were installed on tree trunks in tree branches uh, in uh, difficult to spot locations. But what has happened now is the Hezbollah, which again is arming itself to the teeth on Israel's northern border, now has uh, apparently a highly technical line of uh, intelligence gathering cameras all the way across Israel's northern border. Hezbollah has boasted that they can launch between 40 and 60,000 rockets at a moment's notice because the rockets are all dug in on Israel's northern border. If then, by uh, using this new camera array, they were able to see a, uh, a mounting uh, Israeli advance, they could fire off any or all of those rockets in an attempt to quell that advance. And so we have uh, a buildup, a, a war buildup on Israel's northern border, on Israel's western border between Gaza and Israel, on Israel's eastern border, on the Golan Heights, and Jordan all along Israel's eastern border is less and less stable every day. The Muslim Brotherhood is attempting to unseat the government of Jordan and thereby destabilize the eastern border of Israel. Again, all of this says one thing to me. It says that we are drawing ever closer to the fulfillment of Bible prophecy, which speaks in numerous places, and we've read them to you from time to time, about an upcoming Middle East war of incredible proportion. And the war seems to take place 
in two stages. I believe that we're seeing uh, the last details, the last elements of stage one being put in place right now. And uh, we have uh, Benjamin Netanyahu uh, landing in Paris, talking with French uh, President Francoise Hollande about what in the world uh, they can do to set back nuclear production in Iran. It's an amazing time in which we live. And uh, of course, we bring you all these uh, news notes because we think that they play right into uh, Latter-day Biblical prophecy. And of course, we're constantly watching these news items. You won't see them in most American newspapers, but we'll talk about them here as time allows. Gary Stearman, hey, keep looking up. Jesus is coming before you know it.